So, same thing. Wow, I'm sorry, random side tangents, guys. The coffee is kicking in. Hips are still going to go back if you can't do that 45 pounds, right? He's got to combine 20 or 40 pounds. So he's still lighter than a bar. He goes that same motion. Now, especially with that dumbbell, we can start to change a little bit here because he can then put his arms either in a neutral grip or he can put them kind of in 45 degrees and change how his humerus is so he can get better contractions of his lats and his traps. So just go like 45 degrees, right? And he can pull into that position and that's your way. So if this is too difficult with the bar, then we just take it down to dumbbells and we can work in that position, all right? So here's what I want you to do. How do we then create a little bit more tension and train the lats and the traps to move a little more efficiently? So last week, we talked about the dumbbell row, hand was on the bench, everything was nice and flat, shoulder blade came back, and we pulled. We even did 90 degrees out to the side. So now we start to incorporate everything, so keeping the back a little bit more stabilized. This is what we consider a sumo dumbbell row. Some people just like this as a dumbbell row altogether. But what I'm going to do, if I were to say, let's use the end of a bench, I'm going to point my foot right at the end of the bench. I'm going to try to keep it there. All right? I'm going to take my other foot and I'm going to step it out like I'm going to make a V. Okay? My goal is to leave this knee out and turn my hips. So now I get a nice big flat back, I put some pressure on the bench, and I'm keeping my knees out, right? It kind of looks like a sumo wrestler, it's what I call it like a sumo dumbbell row. Because you look like a sumo wrestler just kind of standing there. The goal here is then to not let anything in your hips and spine move, right? We talked about training, you know, to keep the, the spinal erectors locked in, they're there to function isometrically. So, we can get in that position, locking everything in and try to create as much tension as possible through the lat and the trap, right? So I almost reach a little bit extra, try to keep the spine nice and stable, shoulder blade comes back, and it's almost like you're going to try to pull through your rib cage. A lot of people like to get in this position, and they just like to go up and just kind of touch. But what we want to try to do is create that motion. Notice I almost have like a 45 degree grip, pull, and pull through the rib cage. Show you from the other side, okay? So you line the foot up, kind of get that 45 degrees, turn your hips, keep the back nice and flat, 45 degrees, reach, pull through, down, pull through, okay? It's a little bit trickier, so use a the partner, they're gonna to try to help you keep that hip and spine stable. It's gonna be a little bit of movement, it's not gonna be 100% perfect, but the goal is to be able to create stability there and then allow that lat to then increase its range of motion. You could do it on a bench, you could do it on a bar, like if I push this bar here, it doesn't matter, just create that motion, right? A lot of people you'll see will actually do it on a dumbbell rack where they're gonna just put a hand against the dumbbell rack. But that's going to allow you to kind of work that function of the lat to stabilize your spine, okay? Give me a set of 10 of our spine that is controlled. Now, what's this say? And this is where we're going to start moving into because we're going to start, like today, first barbell lift. Now we're going to start adding those in more frequently, all right? So, let's just say you can't get into a position where you can keep this flat, all right? Like you struggle to you know, get to like either on the bench, like to be able to elevate your feet behind you and hold. So what we can do, Ahmad's gonna go ahead and lay down, yep. chest on the bench, facing me. So Ahmad's just gonna come forward, just like push forward a little bit so your chest is like at the top of the bench. Yeah, right there, okay? So now he's got some external support here from the bench. So what this allows him to do is that he's just going to squeeze his butt and he's just going to be able to keep everything. So he's got a little extra support for his spine. So now he doesn't have as much stress there. That way, with a little external support, if he has a hard time, say, keeping his back flat for a barbell row, maybe for that sumo dumbbell row, maybe even on the back extension, he can then start to work and do some of these things without running any risk for injury because can't stabilize there quite yet. 
right? This allows us to train our lats and strengthen our lats so they then strengthen the lumbar spine. So all he's gonna do is he's gonna grab the dumbbells now. There we go. Got it. Same thing, he's gonna try to pinch his shoulder blades back to my finger and then pull, right? Now, everybody knows when he's, he's dipping his arms forward there. Okay, lower down, come down, come down. Shoulders back to my fingers. Shoulders back, shoulders back, shoulders back, shoulders back. Oh, there it is. Keep pulling, now pull the arms. There we go. You feel almost like it's tighter? Yeah, you're good. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. So, that's just another way we do this. Same thing, we can get a lot of range of motion. So now dip down, shoulders forward, shoulders forward, shoulders forward. Now shoulders back. Yep, and now pull with the arms. Oh, look, there it is, right? So he can get a little bit of range of motion here. The nice thing, and we kind of didn't talk about this as much, the thoracic spine can move, right? It's got more space between those discs. So we talked about the multifidi that are down here between the lumbar vertebrae. The lumbar spine doesn't like to move. You don't have multifidi up here, okay? Because that thoracic spine can move. If that thoracic spine didn't move, you can drop the dumbbells to see you can relax that. If that thoracic spine didn't move, all right, Josh would not be able to throw 88 miles an hour because he would be locked in here and you're like, I can't do anything, all right? Basketball, you would not be able to sit there and take a shot because your spine would literally be locked in and you can't, oh, voice cracks again, right? He, they can't shoot, all right? If his thoracic spine is locked in, he can't sprint because he doesn't have that motion to move through. So, to create a little extra range of motion so he can create a little extra tension through his lats and his traps. He can then grab, go ahead and do another couple reps. He can use that bench as external support to then build up some stability at his spine. So especially, um, I think there's even one here, right? So like different machines can do the same thing. We'll talk about the seated row here in just a second. But go ahead and do like five more reps. He can create some extra movement and pull so he can get a little bit more flat there and then a little bit more trap to pull those shoulder blades back. Okay? So that's a chest supported row. Now let's come let's put those down. Okay? And barbell row. Can't stabilize in that position quite yet. Chest supported row, not a big deal. We can do that. Now this just kind of gives us a little external support again. I'm not just going to put his feet up. Right there. And all he's got to do is just keep his spine as tall as possible. And he can grab that bar and just, let's go for the middle handle first. There we go. Oh, he's going for the wide handles first. That's okay. Same thing. There it is. Same thing. He can just keep that lumbar spine still. He lets his shoulder blades come as far as he can without letting everything round. Right? Because so every you start to see, he starts to round a little bit there. So don't go quite far. Great. Right? And then shoulders back and down and then pull. All right, he can do the same thing, widen out your grip now, you can go wide. There it is. All right, and pull. Same thing. So this is just ways, right? We talk about everything's got to level up, everything's got to level down, okay? So those are another rowing movements that are gonna help build up your lats, make your lats stronger. Other things, we talked about these last week with the posterior shoulder, right? Chin ups. We get in that position, our lat gets stronger, our traps get stronger. The lat pull down was our step down from that, the inverted row. All of these work not only just as a shoulder, but then also to create that stability and the strength for your spine. So just give like two more reps. Shoulders come back, arms come back, okay? So, last couple minutes here in class. These are the last you know, two things I want you, we're going over. So go ahead, try out the chest supported row. We've got this, there's also this machine over here where you can do it on, where it's got like the combo lat pull down, you can do the same thing over there. You go here, uh, you could do some of these standing if you really wanted to. So try out a couple of these and then we're gonna go over you know, like what we're talking about in the next coming weeks, okay?